Hi. Welcome to our first developers discussion. My name is Dave Ivory. I'm the producer of Northern Kentucky University's <clears throat> a primer series for public historians. I wanted to take uh, in this first segment uh, or this first discussion the opportunity to explain to the audience or the viewers why we decided to do this type of series. And I wanted to go back and kind of tell the story of, of uh, when I was a student in the program. And one of the fun things that I always remembered about the program was we would have certain uh, uncertain days uh, in every class, I think, uh, during the semester we would have a visitor uh, from a local organization, you know, the public library or the national park or a particular museum. Uh, they would come to class and they would give a presentation on their organization. And every presentation varied um, and they were all great. I mean, as a student, we really enjoy that chance, or at least I really enjoyed the opportunity to meet people and see things or find out things about other organizations. Um, a lot of the times you thought about it from a student's perspective as, as a potential employer or, or something of that nature. And those were great. You know, we would sit in class, we would get these, these PowerPoint presentations and then these kind of Q&As and, and we would just kind of roll from there and, and you know evening classes typically tend to be long and drawn out and any time that you could have a, a guest speaker for you know two hours or whatever it was it, it was a great opportunity and <clears throat> while I found that all of these these presentations were great they um, didn't really do much from the educational standpoint. Um, and, and I'm not saying that, 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 that what was done was bad or wasn't good. What I'm saying is I think it could have been better. And that was kind of the premise behind um, the series and what we started out with. And as we started discussing it in, with the team and started developing concepts and ideas and, and pitches, we started realizing that this could be a really powerful educational tool. And uh, as, as it kind of has snowballed at, at this point, um, uh, it, it just it grew into many, many different components and aspects. And uh, I mean, at this point, we've already gotten, you know, three confirmed segments, uh, one already done, uh, two more in the works, and three or four more ideas in the hopper, you know, it's just kind of snowballing. And the coolest thing about what we're doing is as an educational series, we're actually able to take the student who's in the classroom or at home or trying to get their work done so they can graduate, we're able to actually take the student and transport them through film or video to each of our locations and teach them something in the process. Uh, whether it's visually, you know, what you're going to see or what you're going to do or who you want to look for or what you want to look for. Um, or if it's just to expose the student to different concepts and organizations or processes. So the series in itself has, has kind of evolved into this uh, educational pathway that is uh, you know, self-driven, I guess you would call it. Um, it it's definitely community-driven. Um, uh, my cohort, my, my cohort, <laughs> the co-host, um, Dr. Paul Kincati and I have, you know, developed these great ideas and we kind of see, you know, life in a 25-minute segment and, and, or a subject in a, in a 25-minute segment. So we kind of a, attack each of those segments and, and see what we can best draw from it. Um, it's, it's a really fun process and out of that come you know short little videos that hopefully will be cornerstones in, in the educational process for the program. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring <clears throat> or one of the things that I wanted to bring to the table with this program or with these series is uh, obviously my point of view from the program itself, graduating from, from NKU, but also 
from looking at it from a historian's point of view. Um, a lot of the times, we never really we never really get the opportunity to explore on our own um, what's going on in the field of public history. And uh, I found that to be kind of one of the drawbacks of, of the program itself was that I, I wasn't exposed to a lot of stuff. I, I was exposed to a big chunk, but it led me in, in either you know museum field or it led me down the path to uh, contract history. I, I wasn't given the opportunity to um, just kind of explore myself until probably my last semester, and at that point, I was pretty much off on my own anyway. So, uh, at, from the perspective of this segment, or from the perspective of this the the, the series of this video, um, I, I think that's it's crucial to point out right now that there's um, some stuff some books that everyone should be looking at or uh, at least at some point in your careers you should grab a hold of and read. Uh, they, they can be pretty enlightening and, and they can really open things up for you. Um, the first book that I wanted to talk about was kind of uh, one that I stumbled upon um, at, the, at the end of my program that really put that really put the meaning of public history and what public historians do in perspective for me. Um, you know, it's, it's great to go out and, and have that job in the museum and, and, and get that paycheck and do that work, but unless you're advocating uh, public history at, at the local level, you're really not doing much other than, than preserving history for somebody else. So I'm kind of hoping that this these books that I talk about will give you kind of the exposure that you need or at least a direction that you ought to go in to figure things out. The first book that I really should talk about is History Outreach and this is probably the most basic fundamental start of, of any public historian. Um, is it postgraduate or is it not, I, I can't really tell. I, I definitely can tell you that, that I didn't see it um, in practical use until I, I was out of, out of the program. But <clears throat> it's a book that came out in 1994. It's Britain in Britain, uh, History Outreach by Crager. And what it is, is it's, uh, it discusses programs for museums, historical organizations, and academic history departments. And it discusses it in such a way that it gives you kind of a map of how to take an idea and get out in your community and reach with it. And that's kind of what we've done with the, uh, um, the Primer series. It's an outreach process. It allows NKU's um, Center for Public History to go out in the community, participate in, in programs, in development, and at the same time, an avenue for teaching students on how to do that. So, if you want to understand what I'm doing or why I'm doing what I'm doing, this is where you start. You, you read this particular book. Um, specifically, this is probably what I do best or, or what I'm most infatuated with, is this particular book, also by Krigger Press. Um, this is a Shoresman. Uh, it's a practical introduction to video history. It talks about the, the process in taking history and turning it into film or turning it into video. It's a really good book. Um, if you really like doing uh, documentary style uh, film, this is where you want to start, right here. Um, the next set of books, I'm just going to briefly go over their titles because they're in my library. Um, they do lend a lot of um, uh, understanding to what public historians do as, as a public historian. Um, the first is The Pursuit of Local History. Uh, this is Readings on Theory and Practice by uh, Kamen. This is a uh, Ultimate Press book. It's great if you're going to practice local history. You need to read it. Um, the next one is A Place to Remember, Using History to Build Community. Um, if you're in contract history, this is the direction you're going to be going in. You're going to be uh, looking at connecting the past and the present, and, and this, is, this is a great book to start with. 
Um, this is also by uh, Ultima Press. It's written by uh, Robert Archibald, and it's titled A Place to Remember. Um, the next three are some pretty good ones. Uh, a Sense of History, the place, <clears throat> the place of the Past in American Life. This talks about um, connecting local history and, and America, basically. And some of you may not see that or may not understand that, but if you read the book, you'll get a really good feel for it. This is by Glassberg, and it's by uh, Massachusetts Press. Definitely one to remember. The next one, uh, very similar to the first, uh, The Sense of History, is Defining Memory. And uh, this gives you a lot of good insight on how to recall um, for people. Uh, the last is um, one of my favorites, and this is The Presence of the Past, Popular, Loose, Popular Uses of History in American Life by uh, Rosenwig and Thelen. Um, this is by Columbia Press, really good book. If you haven't read it, you need to read it. Um, I can attest to the value of this particular book, especially when you start, start thinking about photographs and imagery and, and memory recall and defining memory and things like that. This is, this is a great one. Our third segment that we're going to be filming is community history. And this is where we take video history and oral history and we join them together. This is going to be a, um, an interesting um, concept because it's the first time I've ever tried this. But um, what we're going to be doing is looking at it from an educational standpoint that we're taking we're making a video of making a video. Now, that seems kind of odd, but in a sense, that's what it really is. Um, we're taking the student from the beginning process of conducting oral histories, and we're filming that, and then we're filming the components that, that lead up to it, so that when, when we finish, what you'll walk away with as a student is, a, is an understanding of of how to, to do video histories, oral histories of, of individuals. Now, in preparation for this project, we've got uh, several students from uh, Dr. Tincati's class, and we are uh, kind of scrambling to put things together. And what I wanted to, to do um, before that segment was actually filmed was to kind of give a few words of advice. Um, it's going to be rather crazy uh, on the day of filming. Uh, we're going to have a lot of, of students, and we're going to have a lot of people there, and, and, and we're going to be doing a lot of different things. Um, myself included, I'm, I'm going to be kind of running in different directions and trying to make sure I'm, I'm covering all, all my bases that I need to, to make sure I produce the best segment that I can. So in, in the process of doing that, uh, if I had to remind or, or remind anybody to do anything in particular, it's during that segment to, to remember um, to make an emotional investment. Um, anytime that you're dealing with, the, with oral histories and you're doing something with the elderly, uh, it, it's always important to remember that they have this, this huge perspective, um, you know, 70, 80, 90 years of their life, and through their eyes, you can see history. You can hear it through their eyes. And, and that's the important thing that, that you have. So when I say you have to make an emotional investment, you really need to. But and at the same time, you need to make sure that you remember that you have to stay in control. Uh, if you don't stay in control, it, it's over. Um, you're going to end up in so many different places that you're not going to have a story to tell. And that's the idea. I mean, that's why we're doing what we're doing is to tell a story. So just, just remember to stay in control, make an emotional investment, and, and recognize the, the relationship that, that exists between you, the interviewee, and, and the camera. Final thoughts on the segment are pretty simple. Um, if you have ideas about these things, just you know, jot them down, put them on the, uh, put them on the YouTube under the comments. Uh, if you have any comments about the segments as we put them up, 
feel free to, to offer comments. You know, um, there's always room for improvement. I'm always looking to improve. If we miss something or if we're unclear about something or if there's something you'd like to see in, in a future segment, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to, to put those comments in. They're, they're important to me. And I think they're important to uh, the program. And, and more importantly, I think it'll help make the series um, valuable to everybody.